G'day there guys, still can't sleep at night because I think of all the embarrassing things I did in high school. It's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash Am I the A-hole? Now, if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody good content. Thank you. Posted by user DesperateObjective76, titled, Am I the A-hole for not telling my kids I plan to pay off their student loans? So first of all, I believe that people don't spend others' money the way they would their own. I think paying for your own things helps to understand their worth and cost. I have two adult children, Susan, 26 female, and Emily, 25 female, with my husband. We do okay for ourselves, but don't have a ton of disposable income. We told our kids in high school that we do not have the money to pay for their college, we can help with signing loans, and they can live with us rent-free, as long as they're in some type of school. But we wouldn't be able to give them money directly. We talked about how whatever they do need, to make sure it's worth the cost to them, either because they will make good money when they graduate, or because it's their passion. Susan tried to keep her student loans as low as possible by going to a community college and living at home for two years before transferring to the school she really wanted, saying that it wasn't worth going into more debt when she can accomplish the same thing for less money. Emily was less concerned and went to the school she wanted to from the start and claimed it was worth it for the full college experience. Susan graduated with $20,000 in student debt and Emily graduated with $60,000. Now that both kids are done with school and are living on their own, me and my husband decided to sell our current house and get a smaller one. There was enough profit to fully pay off both girls' student loans and have some left over for renovations and retirement savings. I had always planned to do this, but because I wanted the kids to at least plan to pay for their own school, and because you never know what can happen in life, I did not tell my kids about the plan. Now Susan is incredibly mad. She said if she had known I was going to pay off their loans, she would have just gone to the school that she wanted from the beginning. I feel like if it wasn't worth 60k of her money, why is it suddenly worth 60k of mine? Susan thinks I should split the money and they each get 40k instead, but I wanted them to be able to live without this debt hanging over them, not leave one daughter with debt and the other with 20k in disposable income. Susan has complained to my family and they're split, some saying I'm punishing Susan for being smart with her money while others feel that Susan is being unreasonable and should be happy I'm paying off the loans. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I believe I might be an a-hole because one daughter is objectively getting much more money from me than the other, and she would have made different decisions had she known help was on the table. You make a pretty convincing argument as to why you're the a-hole here, and I've gotta say, I do agree with you. One daughter is objectively getting much more from you than the other, and this is entirely your fault. You chose to lie to them about your intentions and helping them out later by paying off their debt, and now you've landed between a rock and a very hard place. Your statement, I feel like if it wasn't worth 60k of her money, why is it suddenly worth 60k of mine, is entirely false. The 60k was worth her money because you made it clear you weren't going to support her, and you knew that. Maybe this isn't worth the cost now, because they won't make good money, or it won't entirely be their passion, because they had to compromise to get the best option for themselves at the time. And I understand that these two aren't entitled to your money, and they should be grateful for you teaching them valuable life skills previous to this, they should also be grateful that you are in fact giving them money to help live a debt-free life from this point. You just went about teaching them these lessons entirely the wrong way, and now there's going to be animosity from either child, no matter how you split the money you give them. Best of luck with that one, you're the a-hole. In the comments, Melite says, You're the a-hole. Give both the same amount, please. One received better education and lived a joyful life, and you're trying to punish the other for being responsible. Pay 40 of for one, the 20 for the other, and then give her 20 additionally. It would be really unfair not to, and your kid might be mad forever. Yeah, 
What a crappy message to send your kids. In addition to punishing one for being responsible, OP is also, hopefully inadvertently, playing favorites by giving one kid $40,000 more than the other. That is a huge difference, and might be viewed as them loving one daughter more than the other. Also, a great way to cause resentment between the sisters too. This, except, no a-holes here. Your intentions are good, but I would keep it equal. They're still young, so if you're uncomfortable with one of them getting 20k in cash, start a retirement fund for them with the 20k, or put it in a special savings account for them to use for a house down payment when the time comes. Um, 26 isn't too young to know what to do with 20k in cash, especially if she's cautious enough with money to go to community college, rather than take out loans at 18 slash 19. You're the a-hole. You plan to pay off their debt and never told them. Susan didn't choose the cheaper option because her education wasn't worth 60k, she chose it because she didn't want a life of debt. Her being angry is justified, she missed a lot of the average college experience in order to avoid the debt. To make the statement that Susan pretty much didn't value her education as much is BS. The fact that Emily spent more money for a more traditional college has nothing to do with her valuation of her education. This is also a large sum difference, being that you were giving Emily $40,000 more of value when she already got an education without the sacrifices Susan had to make. And Pearshaped34 says, You're the a-hole. I'm with Susan. The fair thing to do would be to give them the same out of the house regardless of the size of their debt. You were giving one daughter three times more than the other because she chose to run up more debt. Of course Susan doesn't see that as fair because it's not. To be clear here, what you are doing is very generous, but you should treat your kids equally, obviously. The fact you don't seem to think anything is wrong with giving one daughter three times more than the other makes me suspect they have not grown up in a fair and equal household, so I suspect her hurt probably runs deeper than just the money. Posted by user Granola Bar Hysteria, titled Am I the a-hole for not letting my son claim a box of granola bars? So my son, 16, has a favorite kind of granola bar. We always buy him a huge box so they last longer. The issue is, he freaks out if anyone else has one. We never eat the last one but they're pretty good and it makes for a good snack. He has scared his sister, 14, out of eating any due to his freak out when she dared to eat one. My wife isn't a fan, so she never has one. I refuse to be bullied out of eating one of like 40 granola bars. Yesterday, I grabbed one, and my son started on me. Why are you eating my granola bars? I held up a hand and told him, They are not your granola bars, you did not buy them. They're for the house and everyone can have some. There's a ton left and I can have one. In the future, if your sister wants one too, she can. He got pissed. My wife told me just to have something else and I said no, leaving to enjoy it. My son apparently wrote his name on the box with a sharpie. I put tape over it and put our last name family. My wife says I'm being petty, but I find all of this ridiculous. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Some FAQs. My son isn't autistic and doesn't have an eating disorder. I said we buy him, but I meant that we buy the box. He primarily eats them, but occasionally my daughter and I want to have one. They're not bought just for him. The granola bars in question are the chocolate chip Kirkland bars from Costco. You're not being too harsh in this situation. He's being controlling over something as small as granola bars, which are traditionally shared amongst a household. He's not a kid anymore, he's 16, he knows how to share, and knows that hogging food like this isn't a good look. Time for him to do some growing up and learn to play with the rest of the kids, not being a jealous little baby who hogs the toys from everyone else, because he is being entirely childish in this situation. You are absolutely within your rights as his parents to call him out publicly in front of the family and make a show of his little tantrums. He deserves to be embarrassed for what he's doing so he learns his lesson. 
I would encourage you to keep doing it and have more talks with him as to why he wants to hog these bars. And from my personal experience, positive reinforcement doesn't often work with 16 year old boys in situations like this. Negative reinforcement, like you have been doing, is usually the way to go. Not the a hole. Now, in the comments, Medizin Bell says, Not the a hole. If he wants his own box, he's 16. He can pay for his own box. Ooh, he's 16? I completely skipped over that part while reading. From his behavior, I was just imagining a petulant six year old child and not a young adult. Please do not insult six year old children. A lot of them have better manners than this. I can confirm this as someone with a six year old who offers me a granola bar first before taking one for himself, not the a hole. My five year old got a surprise of M&Ms in our advent calendar. I'd put in four for him and four for his sister. He opened the drawer, counted them out, and went, Hooray! Two each for you, me, mummy, and daddy. Not the a-hole. This is a pivotal moment for your son. Your son needs to learn to share. He's lacking gratitude and showing no understanding for the fact that food costs money and whoever buys it, owns it. Don't let this one go. Hammer this lesson home and he'll be a better son, brother, roommate, significant other, friend, etc. in the future because of it. He should have learned this a long time ago. He's 16, not 3. Of course he should have, and he probably did, but 16 year old boys kind of revert to the worst, most selfish versions of themselves as they are consumed with their social lives and thinking they know everything. It's a good time for some basic refreshes on how to be a good human. 16 is the worst age, boys and girls alike. It's like we all become legitimately insane. You couldn't pay me to be 16 again. I compare teenagers to two year olds. This difference is you can't easily pick up and move a teenager. Between hormones, trying to be independent, be an adult and yet a child at the same time, they do become bonkers. I remember adults telling me my teens were the best time of my life. It gave me no hope for the future. Fortunately, it got much better. Not the a-hole. Tell him to share or buy them himself. You need to nip that selfish crap in the bud. If I was OP, I'd stop buying them altogether. My brother and I had the biggest, world's stupidest fight over the last Mountain Dew when we were in high school, and my mum stopped buying soda for six months. If we wanted any, we had to buy it ourselves. By the time she started buying it again, we both had largely lost our taste for it and joke about World War Dew now as adults. In my house, if you drank the last Mountain Dew, mum would drag your ass to the car, drive you to the store, and make you go in at 10pm to get some so she'd have enough for her bottle the next morning. Large insulated cup that she filled with ice and Mountain Dew to drink over the next day while at work. My mum has two addictions, tobacco and Mountain Dew. She doesn't even like going to restaurants that have Coke products instead of Pepsi. I asked her the other day what she would do if Pepsi just stopped making Mountain Dew altogether. Her exact words were, don't even go there. Last time I went over to her house, she had about eight dozen cans of Mountain Dew in her pantry. We've tried to get her to cut back, but she refuses. Posted by user Cerberus Among Sheep. Titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my sister, try staying married longer than a year before giving me marriage advice? Look, I know the title sounds bad, but give me a chance to explain. My husband and I like to make rules for our life. I find there's a lot of freedom in rules. I know I can do whatever I want inside a certain set of parameters, and there is no way my husband will have an issue with anything. Same goes for him. To be clear, I'm more passive and he is more alpha in the relationship, but I prefer that in a partner. That was one of the qualities that attracted me to him. However, we both make rules for ourselves. Tonight we were having a Zoom double date for Valentine's Day, when my husband said, New family rule! From now on, we will only buy Perrier water instead of San Pellegrino. 
I laughed and said, <laughs> seconded. My sister said that it was weird that we made rules, and it didn't seem like it was a healthy thing to do in a relationship. That it's controlling. What if I like San Pellegrino? I explained that we both have to agree in order for a new rule to be added. She just kept saying negative things about my relationship and how I need to be a strong, independent woman that don't need no rules. Mm, 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 mm. I got upset. I like the rules, and she was making my husband out to be some controlling, crazy person that he isn't. I got so fed up with her badgering that I snapped and said, Try staying married longer than a year before giving me marriage advice. She screamed in outrage and notified me that her daughter, my niece, was in the room doing her homework and heard me, that I disrespected her and worse, did it in front of her daughter. I don't know, am I the a-hole? Edit, I was mid responding to a comment post when the post got deleted, so I'll share it here. They had some questions. Wow, I know this comment doesn't reflect on me in the best light, but it's awesome. You went through a lot of work in reading through my previous posts and comments, and I hope you weren't bored to tears. I feel both honoured and insecure at the same time. I will try my best to answer all the things you brought up. Most of my friends are and were guys from school. It's always been easier to make guy friends. After school ended, we never saw each other anymore in person, and they just became text-slash-online friends. After getting married, my husband and I both agreed no friends of the opposite sex. I don't want to pull all the blame on him for this rule, so the male friends I still had, I explained to them the situation, and they wished me the best in life. You were correct in that my sister is aware of the rule system. I'm not sure which ones you guys will think are weird because I thought the no friends of the opposite sex was normal. My parents are the same way. So I wasn't leaving out critical information on purpose. I use the term alpha because people understand what it means. I wanted to use the word dominant partner, but I thought people would think we were into BDSM, which we aren't, even though there's nothing wrong with BDSM within consenting adults. I like having a partner that's more dominant. My parents are both equal, and they have four hour long arguments about things they don't want to concede an inch of power. I don't care about the little things, and I'd rather have a happy life than fight every day. I don't know. It's just what I wanted, and if I'm not bothering anybody else, it shouldn't be an issue. You were correct that I married my boyfriend last year, so we haven't reached the long-term relationship of 20 plus years. However, I'm not the one giving people unwanted relationship advice. All I was trying to convey in my snap was that she was in no place to give advice. He can be quite stubborn, but when something matters to me, I can and will use my voice to stand up for myself. Thank you for reading and for taking the time to respond. I hope I addressed everything. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. My sister called me an a-hole for disrespecting her, and worse, doing it in front of her daughter. That I always shame her for being divorced multiple times, and I'm not supporting her for doing the brave thing and leaving these bad men. I'm gonna have to go with everyone sucks here for this one. Like, I could admit what the sister said was crappy, but you definitely didn't need to escalate the situation like you did. Those are things that you keep to yourself and not scream out at your friends. You should know better than that. Also, I'm not too sure I can call her an a-hole in this situation from what you've shared, since it seems heavily biased and missing lots of details, but I'm still going to go with everyone sucks here just to be on the safer side. It's leaning between that and you're the a-hole. Now in the comments, Dinesh Lee says, You're the a-hole OP, you're the a-hole. I can't believe how many not the a-holes you're getting, or rather, I can, but it's because you left out so many key details in your biased account in the OP. So I and others have had to do some comment diving to find clues. Your relationship rules do sound pretty crazy and controlling. No opposite sex friends? Red flag. I can see why your sister hit a nerve. As a side note, what happened to most of your friends being guys? Does hubby know about this flagrant rule breaking? But 
Have you considered that your sister may have been genuinely concerned about your well-being, rather than just taking a chance to have a go at you? If my sister was living with that set of relationship rules, even consentingly, I'd be worried. This innocent-seeming water bullcrap was not the first time you told her about your rules system. We don't know which other rules she knows about already. Maybe some of the weirder ones that would be a cause for legitimate concern? Personally, if you were my sister, I'd also be concerned that you met this alpha INTP <laughs> what? when he slid into your DMs on Reddit. I'm willing to accept that's me being judgmental, but that's kind of the point of this subreddit. So maybe from her perspective, she was calling your husband out on his controlling bullcrap and trying to protect you. It's hard for us to know with such scant information. We don't have her side of the story, but it's not difficult to imagine that possibility. You, on the other hand, escalated massively by bringing up your sister's two previous failed marriages in front of her husband. I can't see how that could be justifiable, and as far as I can see, you haven't managed to justify it in the comments. No, going from 0 to 100 real quick is not some immutable character trait that you can't help. No matter what your dad says, and it doesn't matter how soft-spoken you consider yourself to be the rest of the time. In fact, that kind of justification is a telltale sign of an a-hole. Learn some bloody self-control. You are not a child. Plus, you posted about moving in with your boyfriend about a year ago. Maybe you should get off your high horse until you've been in a properly long-term relationship yourself, lol. But seriously, and perhaps most importantly, I think you should consider the possibility that your sister has a point and closely examine your relationship and whether it's healthy. I know you say you love the rules and they're freeing or whatever, but it sounds like a fairly new relationship. Will the rules still be fun in five years' time? Or might they start to feel more restrictive? What happens if you change your mind about a rule that you've already made? Particularly since you say your husband is incredibly stubborn, there is almost no chance of changing his mind, red flags. These comments are full of people saying this reminds them of past abusive relationships. I'm not saying that's necessarily the case, I'm saying you should be alive to the possibility. Could have gone everyone sucks here, but this post and your comments read like they were written by someone aged 16, not 30. So, shrug. I'm giving you some extra a-hole points for being petty and emotionally immature and giving your sister the benefit of the doubt. Yes, I think there are potentially wider issues hiding in this post, and I hope I'm wrong. But I'm also at least somewhat concerned for your well-being. But that doesn't have any bearing on who was the a-hole in this situation, which is what we're here for. You're the a-hole. G'day there guys, and that's the end of today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed it, and were entertained by today's bloody good content. As always, I want to do a quick shout out and a thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your beautiful faces and names will be up on screen right now. Haven't forgot about you guys, sorry I was taking a little break there. So yeah, if you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. If you want to be on this screen, there's links down to the description below where you can sign up and help support the channel and all future projects that I'm going to be doing on this one. With all that said, I hope you guys have an amazing day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. I'll see you in the next episode, and I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you.